Welcome to GBS. We're going to have a look at um, a new project that we're doing. Um, the EV market in electric vehicles is starting to get a bit more momentum, although it's not the solution to all problems, but it's certainly a uh, solution to certain aspects. So the, um, the main manufacturers, Jaguar, Ford, Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche, are all doing electric vehicles, and GBS um, is also doing that. We did our first electric vehicle about five years ago, um, very much a prototype with all our own bespoke transmission and stuff. Um, worked okay, but um, it was too custom um, and too costly. So we've been looking at it again. Now there's more vehicles out there and the parts becoming more available and so on. So we just thought we'd have a quick look at this car we've done for a customer where we've used the Tesla drivetrain. So it's the Tesla Model S motor that we've put in here. Um, and we've wanted to keep the car the same so the visually from the externals the packaging is the same so it's been quite a challenge to actually get everything in the space without changing the silhouette um, we've just managed to do it there's a few little tweaks and compromises here but it's actually worked quite nicely so we'll have a look and show you what we've done Okay, so what we've got here is uh, a standard-ish zero chassis where we've put in the Tesla Model S motor. This is the large unit from the Tesla. Um, this is just a donor unit that's a little bit rough. It's going to be fully cleaned up and that. Um, and we're going to put a limited slip diff in it and a few other things. So you're looking at about 470 horsepower to about 645 horsepower, depending on the spec and the ratings on it. Obviously, the higher up the power they go, the more demand there is on the cooling system and the duty cycle gets a bit lower. Um, but having said that, the weight of the zero and the performance needed, we don't need 600 horsepower. Um, we say we don't need it, but everyone wants it. Um, so this car we've done, um, it's actually for a technical college. They're going to use it for students to develop their knowledge and training around the electric. So it's uh, quite an interesting one. It's going to be, you know, quite a good learning curve for the um, for the students on this um, so what we've done we've taken the standard unit and we've actually completely modified the chassis but tried to keep all the geometry the same um, weight distribution is has moved a little bit further back just because of the weight of this unit it is um, incredibly heavy for what it is but you have got your motor in here your power electronics inverter and everything your gear gearbox and your differential drop down so there's a lot going on in here. We've kept it the same height, so you've still got a boot space within here. So externally, once the car's done, you, sh you won't really be able to tell too much that it's got the um, electric drivetrain in. Um, it's not for everyone, but um, it's given people the option. Then at the front, the actual college are gonna do their own battery packs and that, so we've just altered the chassis slightly and put some extra mounts in. So there's a, a area that they can use for all the batteries then there'll be all the circuit breakers um, some of the power electronics cooling system um, there's two lots of cooling there's the battery cooling and there's also going to be the motor inverter cooling that's already in the back um, the plan at the moment that i think they're going with they're going to run all the cooling pipes down to the front and do a more conventional radiator in the nose cone um, and ex exploit the aperture of the nose um, the previous electric car we did um, for ourselves, we actually ran a um, cooler in the back, um, which worked, and then we used an air cooling system on the batteries. Proved to work okay, a um, little bit too complex, really. Um, as I said earlier, now that the availability of the parts and that is out there because there's the number of electric cars on the road and the number of electric cars getting damaged, scrapped, and being able to buy them new at um, OEM prices, it's making it more available to people. Um, so this is one of the first, we've actually got another car we're building at the moment that's going to be for ourselves, which is going to be a, an electric demonstrator. We're looking later this year to actually offer that as a package, as a self-build, um, where you can buy a chassis that will have the electric power training and that, and then you can develop your own batteries, modules and so on. So it gives the home builder who's really into the electric market a platform to work on and develop. Um, so anyone that's interested in that, get in touch. It's quite a bespoke, quite a niche area, but we're, we're doing quite a lot and working with a few people. So um, if you are interested in that, um, get in touch. Um, we've also done previously a full four-wheel drive electric 
car with a carbon tub, uh, which people may have seen. Um, we'll add some video and some pictures into this video so you can have a look at that. And again, anyone interested in any of the technology we've developed, get in touch. Um, so what we've done on, on this, going back to this, um, most of the powertrains are on a three-point mountain, typically. Uh, so you've got a bush at the back, um, bush at the front, which is taking all your, your torque load-ins. And then there's a single smaller bush on the side that's just stabilising the unit. Um, which is more just taking out the vibrations and movements in the road. But the, the main load coming through the two is front and rear, which is um, taking the reaction torque from the wheels. Um, so we've beefed up the chassis a little bit at the back, changed some of the mountings on it. Um, we've had to slightly change the wishbones just to narrow them a bit, just to get them a bit more room. Um, the car that we're actually developing for ourselves and that we'll be offering is not going to use this powertrain. Um, as much as it's quite nice going with the bigger Tesla unit and the extra power, it's not really necessary. Um, so we're actually going with a slightly smaller unit. It's still going to be 300 horsepower, so ample performance considering how they deliver the power. Um, it should be, you know, more than enough on a car that's still going to be around the sort of 550 to 700 kilo mark, depending on the battery size that you go with. Um, on the batteries, we'll do a separate video. We've actually developed our own battery system, um, which is up to the one we're going to be using is going to be 58 kilowatt hours. Um, and then we've got a slightly smaller one that's a bit lighter as well. So depending on the range you want or the performance, um, we're trying to cover it in both ways. So whether you have them in parallel or series, just to keep the voltage the same, um, and that will deliver as much peak current as the motor can pull. So we're, we're not limited on that. Um, but it's an interesting area that we're sort of dabbling in, working with a few partners in the industry. Um, so watch this space and as we develop it more, we'll uh, share, share the story with you. Um, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to hearing from you.